lady and gentlemen. So uh, today I would like to say a few more words about random forest, in particular how to compute variable importances with random forest, and I will then talk about regression a lot. And uh, <laughs> yes, you've all seen linear regression, but I think you've see you will see a few new twists uh, to that topic. So. Uh, Breiman himself proposed two measures. One of them is called the Gini importance. And you remember that uh, the Gini criterion was used to decide where we want to make a split. And uh, his argument is that uh, variables that are often chosen to make a split and variables that contribute a lot towards reducing the impurity, those must be good variables. And accordingly, the Gini importance is the sum of the impurity decrease that can be achieved and this sum is uh, taken separately for each variable or each feature and it is taken over all the nodes in all the trees. Um, it has the advantage that it, this is very simple to compute, uh, so minimal overhead, but it also has a few problems. In particular, it is biased, so it prefers those categorical variables, if you have such variables in your features, those categorical variables with many levels. <coughs> so if you take something like weight or size, this would be a continuous feature, uh, but there are also categorical features like uh, has eyes, does not have eyes. Uh, this particular case would be just two levels, but sometimes you have more categorical levels in one variable. And then this amounts to a multiple testing problem. So just by chance, you are likely, if you have very many levels, um, you are more likely to find a split that reduces the impurity than if you have few levels. Okay, and hence this is biased. And then there is the permutation importance. For the permutation per importance, this is something like a brute force measure. Uh, you remember that we, we partition the training set for each tree into uh, two parts. One part is used for building the tree and the other part uh, the out-of-bag sample is sent down the tree and is used to evaluate the accuracy of this particular tree. And the, this out-of-bag performance is a good proxy for the generalization error, so for how well the tree will perform on the test set. And this permutation importance now looks at the accuracy that can be achieved if you take the variable uh, the way it should be used, or if you scramble the variable. Uh, uh, so, um, scrambling would mean that uh, you, in your matrix X, which is P rows for uh, the features and N columns, we are now interested in uh, one particular variable here and we would now randomly permute the values within within this row here so we would uh, somehow randomly push around uh, these values 
and then train the tree on this uh, perturbed or modified training set and see how well it's going to do. So permutation importance is the difference in the out of bag prediction accuracy of the entire ensemble. before and after randomly permuting a feature. So this is related to randomization tests. Now, this is more expensive, but uh, typically also works better than the Gini accuracy. However, it turns out this also has a problem, namely with highly correlated data. And uh, this was uh, described in a series of papers by uh, Caroline Strobel, uh, who argued that implicitly what this randomization test does is it uses uh, the following null hypothesis. namely that feature number j is independent both of the labels and of all other features. So I'm writing here x minus j to indicate the set of all features except feature number j. Now this null hypothesis corresponds to assuming that both are true, so xj should be independent from the labels and xj should be independent from all other features. And uh, this null hypothesis can now be rejected based on violation of either assumption. So based on either this or that claim, which is being refuted. And uh, well, this statement here is not true if you have highly correlated data. And this is why she and her co-authors, why they go on to uh, propose a conditional permutation importance. which uses the correct null hypothesis, namely that xj is independent of all, sorry, is independent of the labels. Let me start again. xj is independent of the labels. And now the whole statement here is being conditioned on the values of all other features. And uh, practically this means that you don't want to permute uh, all entries of this jth feature, but only those entries that have similar values for the remaining features. Okay, now there's lots more to say about random forest, but we don't have lots more time. So this is all I wanted to say, unless you have more questions. Yes. Okay, so uh, the what's an out of back prediction here? We said that we uh, construct a tree as follows, namely we sample with replacement So we sample n observations out of our training set of n observations and uh, 
then there are some observations that we're going to sample once, others we're going to sample twice, and there are quite a few which are never going to be selected, which is the out-of-bag sample. Okay, so we, we get the in-bag and the out-of-bag sample. And now this in-bag sample is then used to construct a tree where, importantly, we use randomness uh, in the selection of features which are candidates for making a split at each node. And uh, this tree is, is grown to full length, so until all the leaves are totally pure. And then we can uh, pass the out-of-bag samples down the tree. So we see in which leaf they end up in order to make a prediction. But because our out-of-bag samples came from the training set, we also have their true labels, and hence we can compute uh, the out-of-bag error as a proxy for the performance we would get on an independent test set. Other comments or questions? Yeah. What are these important skills for us as we move okay. That's the really important question that I didn't answer. <laughs> so thanks. Um, there are, so why, why are you interested in getting these uh, feature importances? Um, there are two reasons. One is that you, or let's say three reasons. Um, one is that you may want to interpret your data. You will want to know which features are actually meaningful ones. Then secondly, this uh, allows you to uh, get a speed up or to save you costs. So let's say um, if you find that uh, only uh, three gene expression levels or biomarkers or something are enough to make a valid prediction, then you're not going to measure, you know, a thousand others if you have to pay for that. Uh, and then finally, uh, the non-predictive features can sometimes even hurt your performance. So you want to get rid of these, and uh, this allows you to try and estimate which features are meaningful in the first place. Um, here I have an example that's uh, worked by Björn Menzer. Uh, where he was looking at uh, spectra. So in this case, um, those were spectra from the blood serum, and the aim was to predict uh, BSE, which was, you remember a few years ago when people didn't eat beef any longer? Okay. So there was a big, uh, everybody tried to predict uh, or, or to even diagnose BSE before you would have the clinical phenomena in, in animals. And uh, in this top plot here, uh, you see... Um, as a part of the spectral region. So these are spectral channels here, only 500 out of a few thousand channels that constituted the entire spectrum. And now, on the one hand, uh, the average overall spectra of those cows who were BSE positive and BSE negative, the average of all spectra was subtracted. So, uh, and then the deviation from the average spectrum was plotted separately for the positive and for the negative group. So you see that the, uh, we have the median, I believe, that's the middle line here, and there's the median, and you see that these two taken together, uh, well, if they were the arithmetic mean, then they would sum up to zero. But because the median is taken, this is only approximately true. So what we see is the median, and then uh, a spread, plus or minus some percentile. Uh, so what we see is, let's say, black is the positive group, 
that uh, at around uh, channel 80 uh, we observe lower spectral intensities for the positive group than for the negative group and similarly here there's a clear difference. Now if you use a univariate uh, feature importance so for example if you test if you make a hypothesis test that will ask you know how about uh, spectral channel number 80 is there a significant difference between the groups then you would find that yes here there is is a significant difference between the groups but then there are areas like here where uh, hypothesis tests are going to tell you no uh, you know the groups here are overlapping completely and in the bottom plot you see the gray line this is such a univariate feature importance I'm not sure which one exactly but it's something like uh, the result of a statistical hypothesis test and essentially when the the groups here are far apart in average then uh, you know th this gray curve will give you high values this will tell you these are interesting variables these are interesting variables and these are uninteresting variables however such univariate measures by definition they can only look at how predictive is this single spect spectral channel or how predictive is that single spectral channel and if you take a single spectral channel, then you know obviously this is not predictive. But in a tree, if you look at uh, well, most trees are longer than just uh, you know uh, level one. So you typically ask several questions, and it can very well happen that uh, one variable alone is not informative, but in conjunction with another, it is informative. And this is what random what random forest uh, tests for. And this is the black curve down here. So this gives you uh, the ranked importance of uh, all features. And this is now a multivariate measure. And it here it so happens that we actually find that this spectral region here, uh, it is quite important. And just uh, anecdotal evidence for um, how well Random Forest is doing. Um, so this was a serious uh, industrial project, so we got a serious meaning. We got uh, the training data, but not the test data. And they said, you know, go away and do what you can and then come back with your results. And then they evaluated on the test data how, how good uh, that was going to be. And uh, here they, uh, they comp well, they uh, also worked with other groups and uh, got a couple of predictions here for different methods so sensitive and specificity is uh, the quality of the prediction and then the meta classifier which combined those and random forest alone on this data set was uh, about as good as this meta classifier that consisted of several other ones uh, amongst them quite complicated ones uh, and there by the way um, this is uh, infor information which features were used uh, so those are the random forest variable importances uh, and those were the features that were used by the other methods. So you see that the random forest did use some channels here that were not really picked up by the other, other methods, and maybe this is where the performance difference came from. So uh, that's a very good question, thank you. Um, the nice thing about these feature importances uh, in random forest is that they are multivariate measures.